How's it going everyone? It's Lee again from Function Dynamic and in this video we're going to go through creating some workflows for our Zoho Creator application. Now last time we left off we demonstrated um, the lookup fields between uh, the different entities. So we have customers, sales people, and they're related to sales. Same with line items and products. Now we want to tie it in a little bit more and create some automation. Looking at the sales record right now, we have a, a basic schema in place. However, it's still missing a few things. And as mentioned in the previous video, it would be nice to see um, a subtotal uh, per line and then maybe a, um, a uh, subtotal and then uh, some taxes in total. And that can be done through workflows. And to do that, you would first go over to Edit Application. And before we add in workflows, what we want to do is adjust uh, some of the fields. So if we go over to Line Items, since we're editing the uh, Line Item subform, click there. Open Form Builder, and then we'll add in a currency field. So. Uh, this will be, we'll call this the uh, line total. And then push done. Now if we go back and access the application, we can take a look at the uh, sale form and see that the new line total field is showing up there. So we don't have to worry about that. Now going back we'll want to add in um, some additional fields on this form right here. And now before I do, I'll just show you one thing. We have a uh, the fields up here. We have the subform. Now if I try to throw in some fields down here, what it's going to do is it's going to recommend creating a new section. And uh, what we can do with this is we could rename it or we could just hide the section entirely. It's up to you. Uh, for now, let's just keep it in there and rename this um, totals. Now we've thrown in a sub, uh, well, we've thrown in one currency field. We'll call that subtotal. Then we'll throw in uh, one for taxes. And then lastly, we'll add in a total. And with that in place, what's essentially going to happen is, I'll just exit out of here, go to access this application. Now, we want to add some automation. So each time, let's say we select uh, an item and then enter in the quantity, uh, we'll um, automatically update the line total, which will then update the subtotal, apply some taxes, and then the total. Because each time you can imagine, it'd be pretty cumbersome just every time you add that in, you'd have to have the price list on hand and maybe do some calculations and then add in uh, do this by hand. It's just a lot of work and that can be completely circumvented with uh, the use of workflows. So I'll just jump out and then jump right back in um, and show you how to edit uh, the workflows. All right, so if you want to create your first workflow, what you would do is go over to the workflow tab at the top, click that, and then just click uh, create workflow. And this will bring us to this screen where we can uh, choose our form and specify when it's triggered. So what we want, as mentioned, is to run the form on the sales form and then choose created or edited. Um, this means that the workflow will happen whenever um, you're making changes or creating the uh, record for the first time. Uh, when to trigger the workflow, we want to select uh, input of a field. And then from there, we get a new field right here uh, called choose field. And we can either choose one directly on the form itself or the sub form. And for this, we'll choose product. 
and then um, uh, name the workflow. Now, there's different approaches to this. Um, it's best to uh, name it something that uh, makes sense. You don't want to call it workflow A because when you're coming back to it, it's going to be, you'll have to go in and take a look at the code to see what it does. And then, yeah, just make it something that is understandable. Um, and then uh, press create workflow. Doing this will give us uh, this new page and we want to add a new action. And this is where the coding begins. All right, so to do this, what we'll do is we'll begin with um, an if else statement. So essentially what this means is we're going to do a check and if it passes the check, we'll do one thing and if not, we'll do the other. Um, the thing we want to check is, well, we'll actually check two things. We'll first check if row dot product does not equal null. So this essentially means if we have the, if there is a product, do a calculation. If not, don't do the calculation. But not only that, we are adding a second condition now. And if row dot quantity does not equal uh, null, so we're both checking if there's a product and a quantity. Then we can do the calculation. And if there's uh, not both of those, we won't do the calculation just because uh, we're multiplying the product by the quantity. Uh, we'll just jump into the uh, else statement right now. We'll say row dot line total equals zero. Um, so that means if if we don't have both the product and the quantity, then we're just going to set it to zero because we can't calculate it. Um, but if we do, we'll create a variable called uh, product equals product. And we're, what we're going to do right now is a fetch statement. So as soon as you type in P, it will say, oh, we get the, uh, we know that there is the product form. Do you want to use this? You can just select that and we fetch it. So ID, if you recall from the uh, previous video, Zoho Creator attaches IDs to each of the entities. Um, ID equals row dot product. Um, and the row dot product, even though it will show the product name, um, what it is is actually just the ID associated with it. So this is this line right here is essentially telling us, hey, get uh, me the product with ID of this. Once we do that, as soon as we type in product uh, and then period, we can access any of the variables or any of the uh, fields on that form. So right now we have the name, the price, and in stock. We'll want to use price right here, but not at this very second. We want to adjust the um, the line total. So we'll do row dot line total equals product dot price and times. So when we're programming, multiplication is represented by the asterisk uh, times row dot quantity. And that should be it. And before we um, before we jump in and see if that works, what we'll do um, is I'm just going to exit out of that. I copied it. We can see that this is on user input of the line items uh, product. We also want to apply the same thing, the exact same formula to the um, user input of line items dot quantity because both of those can be edited and we want the workflow to run both on either one or the other. So I'll just go ahead, create a new workflow um, and go to input of a field. And this time I'll do quantity and calculate cost. Once I do that, I'll just add the new action, paste it, press save. 
And then once I go to done, we can go and t test this application. So clicking that, we'll go to sale. Once we do add new, we'll add chair. And we see the line total is um, set to zero. That's because we have the if else statement. We know that without a quantity, with without both the product and quantity, that this will always be set to zero. But as soon as we add the quantity, it is going to pull the price from this specific chair record, multiply it by the quantity, and then give us the line total. And likewise, if we change it to sync, we can go here. And if we just want to take a look at the products really quickly, we can see that over here we can see the different prices. So uh, they're pulling over correctly. All right, now that we have the workflows in place to calculate the uh, line totals automatically by either entering the product or the quantity, we now need to add one final step to calculate the subtotal, taxes, and total. Now to do this, we'll go over to the uh, edit this application and we're going to edit the uh, workflows that we already did. So I'll start over with the uh, line items quantity. And then we're going to add a little extra functionality. And we'll start off by creating some variables. I'll start off with a uh, subtotal uh, variable equal and set it to zero. And then uh, tax rates, and I'll set that to, for demonstration purposes, 15%. And now what we want to do is we want to loop through each line item and then add up the costs. So we're starting off with subtotal being zero. That's because we'll start at zero and then add each line item as we go along. So to do that, we'll do a for each um, line item. And, and we're going to get rid of this and say input dot uh line items so we're going to go through all the rows in the uh, line item subform and we'll do subtotal equals subtotal plus um line item dot line total and then once so what we'll do is we're just adding subtotal to itself plus the additional line item or line total for each line item then once we have that all summed up we're we are going to add that into the subtotal field so we'll say uh, input dot subtotal equals subtotal now keep in mind that uh, the variables are case sensitive and also um, come from a different object so here specified by input we're referencing the fields in the form here is um, the variable we declared just right here. So they're different um, entities altogether. So uh, this will either be nothing or uh, a previous subtotal, and we're going to assign it to the new subtotal. After that, we'll say input.taxes equals input.subtotal plus um, nope, we don't want to do that. We want to times it by the tax rate. And then finally, we'll do input dot uh, total equals input dot uh, subtotal plus input dot taxes. And then we'll save that. And we're going to copy everything and close out of that. So we're in line items dot quantity. We're going to do just as before, we're going to add it to the separate workflow. And since we're doing the same thing for both the product and the quantities, we could just overwrite it like this. Now, so let's just go and give that a test. So we'll go to access this application. And uh, fingers crossed, if everything is good, we'll, it should add up these right here so um yeah it's well this is a promising start we can see that we have zero and it's just casting over to here let's just add in two 
and we can see that yes it is calculating over likewise if i add in sync and add in two it looks like everything is being applied properly now there's one thing missing however and if we press delete we can see that these are not uh, reflected so we'll need to add in one last workflow for that and for this we'll need to create a new workflow altogether uh, we'll keep it on created or edited and then we'll do deletion of a row and then go to uh, select uh, line items as the subform and we'll call it recalculate and press create and this will be a much simpler uh, script we'll start with uh, tax rate and we'll set it to 0 0.15 again and uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to be subtracting so input dot subtotal equals input dot subtotal minus the row dot line total so this time we're taking the deleted row specified by uh, the row variable and the row the row being deleted we can see here we can access the quantity product sale etc but we're just going to uh, we just need the line total so we'll do row dot line total and subtract subtotal from that and then we're going to essentially just do what we did before which is um, calculate uh, the taxes and the total based off of the new subtotal so inputs dot taxes equals input dot subtotal uh, times uh, tax rate and input dot total is equal to the sum of both of the uh, subtotal and taxes so I'll add those in here dot taxes push save and we'll go and test to see if that works so we'll go over to sales and then add in chair we'll add in this let's add in another one so we have a total of seventy dollars now if i remove this line right here as mentioned subtotal will become subtotal minus the row being deleted so it should be 40 let's see if that works and it does whether you already have a creator application are looking to get started or just want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to get pointed in the right direction always feel free to reach out to us at function dynamic by going to www.functiondynamic.com click the contact us link and fill in the get started form once filled in, you will automatically receive an email with a link to schedule a time that works best for you. This was Lee from Function Dynamic. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we cover specialized report fields.